we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We say may all praise and glory and honor be to our God, even now and evermore. Today we'll be talking about this topic is a continuation of where we stopped last we called unto holiness. Last week we looked at the topic, you must be holy. Holiness is a must because we are called unto holiness. Let's look at the test for today. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 to 7. Before we read, I want us to pray. O Lord, we ask that you speak your word to us. Cause the entrance of your word to give us life and understanding also even to the simple. Let your word bring liberation to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we give you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger, because that the Lord is the avenger of such, of all such, as we also have, have forewarned you and testified. For God had not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, called unto holiness. Paul is exhorting the church in Thessalonica about the way they need to walk, that now that you have been called, now that you are in Christ, we exhort you to walk by the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. That now that you are in Christ, you don't need to defraud one another anymore. You don't need to walk in the lust of your flesh anymore. You are called unto sanctification. Therefore, you have to live a holy life. You are not called unto uncleanness, but you are called unto holiness. Please, if you have not watched last week's message, I advise you to go and listen to it. It's going to build some level of foundation and understanding because this message is a continuation of the one of last week. And please like, comment, and share this video with your friends and your loved ones. And I also encourage you to support our ministry and our charity organization. The schools just resume, and this is a first step. We have a lot to do. And we are tempted to drop some of the children because we can't actually cut up for them. Some of our sponsors have withdrawn. We know things are difficult. So if the Lord lays it in your heart, it is never too small. A dollar is is 1,600 naira or plus or more because of the exchange rate. So even though inflation is high, it will still go a long way. Why I'm saying this is that 
we are not just serving God and not just living for ourselves, but we are also living for others. We also cater for the needs of those who are in need. And not just that too. This helps us to focus in the in eternal things. Because where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Let's look at the message. Paul is saying that you no longer need to live like those in the world. Those who are Gentiles, for you were once like this, but since you have been called into the fold, you are now a chosen generation. You are now a royal priesthood. There is a lifestyle that is set for you. You have been called into a kingdom where holiness is a nation. Holiness is not by practice. It is a nation. That is why you must be regenerated. You have to be born again and you have to be born of God. Not just be born again, but you have to be born of God so that you can be empowered to live the life of holiness. How many of us have this understanding that we are called unto holiness, not unto uncleanness? I want us to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. As ye know how we exalted, how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father taught his children that ye would walk worthy of God who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. Praise God. It is shameful for us to go back to our former work. It is shameful for us to continue to do the things we used to do while we were in the world. While we live in the world, while we walk In the light, there is a constant battle between the deeds of the flesh and the deeds of the spirit. It is the one you yield yourself to that you satisfy its desire. If we understand that in this kingdom, there is a lifestyle, there is a nation that we are supposed to have, and that, and that that nature is a nature of holiness and righteousness. That will inform the way we think. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. And everything we do is from the heart. Every action is from the way we think. Because sin begins in a very simple way. It is It begins from ordinary desires. And when it gets pregnant, it gives birth to sin. It leads to temptation. And when one is tempted and he falls, temptation itself is not sin. But evil desire, wrong desires, lead to temptation. It creates room for temptation. And the temptation leads to sin. And when sin is fully accomplished, sin gives birth to death. That is why we need to wash our understanding and our thinking because that is what controls everything. A righteous man, out of the abundance of the thoughts of his heart, of the good thoughts of his heart emanate his behavior, his actions, his fruits. So also an evil person out of the abundance, out of the bank of evil thoughts emanates this wickedness and all sorts of horrible things. 
As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So we need to have this primary mindset that the kingdom of God is holy and we are called unto holiness. We are not called unto struggle. But everyone that is called into practice and into mastery definitely will have some level of struggle at the beginning. We train ourselves unto godliness. And in course of training, we fall and rise and fall and rise. But the most important thing is that your mindset is set unto holiness. That this is the kingdom of holiness. I'm not permitted to live my life the way I want. What happens to those on the other side who have claimed to be Christians? It is also about their mindset. They believe that, well, I'm free to do anything I want to do because the love of God covers my sins. In fact, there are men of God who are not actually men of God, who are preaching and teaching that you don't even need to confess your sins. I know I need to do a lot of teaching on the need for confession of sins and continuous repentance. Repentance is a change of heart. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, the first thing is you hear the gospel. Second thing, you are convicted. And when your heart is pricked, you change your mind. And that change of heart is repentance. And when your heart, when, you're, when you have a change of mind, it affects your actions. It affects the way you think. It affects the way you reason. It affects the way you act. Because as a man thinketh, so he is. As you think in your heart, that is what you're going to be in your actions. So after that repentance, there are still things you are going to be convicted about. The revelation of God's word. From time to time, you continue to see God and the Spirit of God throwing light on His Word, shining His light in the, in the corners of your heart, and you begin to have a deeper understanding. The more you grow in the Lord, the more you see that, oh, this thing I used to like is actually seen. No, I have to change from it because now I know the truth. I need to have a change of mind. So you keep repenting. That is what... The word of God does. So you are born of the word of God. From time to time. You continue to have a change of heart. You continue to amend your ways. But if you do not have this understanding. If you do not have the knowledge of God's word. And have this primary mindset that the kingdom of God is a holy kingdom. We are called unto holiness. There will be no prompting, no newness, no renewal of heart that will propel you and begin to hold your conscience accountable that no, you can't do that. And propel you to do what is right and pursue holiness and righteousness. The mindset is very, very important. Let us look at this Bible verse again. Paul says, verse 12, 1 Thessalonians 2, 12, that you walk, that you would walk worthy of God. We have a calling. As a child of God, as a child of the Holy God, the Holy Almighty God. We have been called into His kingdom and we must walk worthy of God. I know that by myself, I'm not worthy to be called to preach this gospel of holiness. But I have been called. 
necessity has fallen on me. The fact that I have accepted the call also means that I have accepted the responsibility. Now I cannot say I need money and use any means to get money for myself. I cannot say because God created sexual urge for me that is a part of me, I have to satisfy that urge through any means. No. It has to be according to the ordinances of God. According to what God has ordained. It's so painful that a lot of people blaspheme the name of our holy God. How? By attaching themselves to the name of God. But they don't want to live like God. Just as he who called you is holy. Therefore be holy in all your conversation. If I say I'm a Christian, which means I'm Christ-like, people who don't know Jesus want to know how Jesus looks like through my behavior, through my words. This is why we have a lot of confusion in the world. I was talking with my former accountant, I think last week or two weeks ago, last week, and I asked her, you've worked, you worked with me for over two years, two years and some months. Have you ever heard me lie any day? She said, no. Have you ever heard me lie any day? She said, no. It's not because I don't lie by mistake. But when I lie by mistake and I see that, oh, this thing I said, this is not the truth. This is actually the truth. Sometimes you could even, maybe you have paid someone, you bought something, you've paid someone, and you are bringing money again. And the person said, uh, I don't think you've, uh, I don't think you have not paid. You've paid me. You say, you could say, um, I don't think I've paid. Did I pay you? So also, you may not have paid someone and you would think you have paid. So when you realize that, oh, I have not paid, you have to pay. Because at the moment you realize that what you said before was not the truth, it becomes a sin. You've missed the mark. If it is out of ignorance, that is not intentional. If it is because of the failure of your brain to remember, that is not intentional. But you did not do right. Sometimes some people could deliberately not write things down so that in case they forget, they will say, oh, they will just bank on that and say, oh, it was a mistake. But some a sin you can prevent. If you don't prevent it and you make a mistake, it is also a sin because you created room for it. That is why when we confess our sins, we also need to confess the sins we are not aware of. It's not because God is a, is, is a wicked God. It's not because God is always shining his torch to look for something to hold against us. No. But because we are living in a kingdom of righteousness. And in this kingdom, it is expected of us that our garment, our robe of righteousness that the Lord has given to us free of charge must be without spot and wrinkle. So you have to be very, very conscious because we live in a dirty world. We live in a world that is dirty. We live in a body that is imperfect. So we have to be conscious at every point in time and make sure that our garment is white. That is not being legalistic. That is the nature of the kingdom. 
Why is it that a lot of people are living in sin, yet they claim to be Christians? Remember, the topic of today is that we are called unto holiness. Called unto holiness. People say, oh, the holiness we're talking about is we cannot be holy. But if we cannot be holy, God will not command us to be holy. So the fact that he has commanded us means that it is attainable. Let us look at Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 8. Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah, Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he covered. He did fly, and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me! For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a life coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy, thy sin purged. Also, I had I heard the voice of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send, and who? will go for us. Then said I, here am I, here am I, send me. Why did I turn to this scripture? Before the Lord will send you on an errand to go and represent him, to preach him, he needs to work on you first. He needs to cleanse you. He needs to reveal his standard of holiness to you. Remember, Isaiah had been a prophet even before this time. He was a prophet. But for the years of his prophetic ministry, he never saw the holiness of the Lord. He never saw the standard. By the time he saw the standard, his eyes became open. This is what is happening to many of us who are Christians. Because we have little understanding, we think, oh, this is everything. But we need to continue to pray that the Lord will reveal himself more and more to us. As a baby in Christ, Feeding on milk. The Lord may not reveal everything to you about his holiness. Maybe the man of God that taught you was a baby in Christ. He hadn't actually encountered another level of God's revelation of holiness. And that is where you got the gospel from, the good news from. And you haven't actually Try to dig deeper and dig and study the word of God and know for yourself. I listened to the testimony of a sister a few days ago who said their pastor 
never allowed them to read the Bible. Even in this generation. <laughs> That's slavery. That the day she was invited to a Bible study elsewhere, she was crying when they were reading the Bible. That she was crying as they were reading every verse. She then discovered that, oh, the gospel is so simple. I've been in bondage. Isaiah saw another level of holiness. He saw that God is holy. Even the angels of God, mighty angels of God, the holy angels of God, were even covering their faces with two wings and even covering their feet because they were standing on the holy ground. That the holiness of God is so high. The standard is so high that your feet alone could shake before him. And they had to cover their feet and tread with carefulness and serve the Lord with fear. Even while rejoicing, they rejoice with trembling. When you have a revelation, sometimes when you are in a vision and you have a revelation, your body transforms, you shake, you fear. The awe, the reverence, the reverential fear that is associated with the worship of God is eroding away and a lot of people think is a religion christianity is not a religion isaiah saw and it was then after he saw that he realized that oh even though i'm a prophet i've not been holy enough why because even though i have unclean lips i dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips we live in a world where almost everybody is wrong. Now people can just believe anything, teach anything, and get away with it. No accountability. <laughs> a man of God was doing a live video. <laughs> and then his girlfriend Adam, it was like they were quarreling before. I don't want to call his name. So he was on a live video. And his girlfriend, who he was fornicating with, had to attack him during the live video. And he was prophesying to people. <laughs> now there is no accountability. People can just go online and teach anything they want to teach. Fleece the people. Milk them. Of their resources and spit out lies and there are people who are ready to swallow everything because they are not ready to live the life of the kingdom no accountability majority of what we call standard today is below the standard of god I'm not trying to be legalistic, but I'm telling you what I know. Try and seek God. See what Jesus Christ said? Seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So you have to seek it. Seek the righteousness. Seek the holy kingdom. And when you have it, Seek the righteousness. You have to seek it. Let nobody deceive you. If you are a man or a woman and you have one eye, but you live in the midst of people who have their two eyes blind, you will think you are the king. But the day you live there, and go to a city where there is no blind man. Everybody has two eyes. That day you will know. 
that something had been wrong with your life all your life. But because you used to live in the midst of people who have one eye each, you never knew. God has his own standard. Let everyone who call the name of God depart from iniquity because the wrath of God is coming because of the very things that people say it doesn't matter. Ephesians 5, 5 to 8 says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no pastor deceive you. Let nobody deceive you. That once saved, always saved. That our righteousness is in Christ alone. Therefore, we can live in sin and not do anything. Even though we have it translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Don't let people who are on their way, who are on, their, on the fast lane and the broad way to the fire of hell, deceive you. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Continue to pursue. It may not be easy with you, but continue to pursue. Remember what happened. If it had been in the power of Isaiah, it would have made itself clean. The truth is that you cannot make yourself clean. This is what a lot of people misunderstand. You can't make yourself clean. Holiness is from God. Our righteousness is in Christ alone. He declares us holy, discharged, and acquitted. But he did not just forgive us to go into the world, but he has admitted us into his kingdom. We now have one body with Christ. And because he is the owner of our body now, we have no right to take the body and hook that body with a prostitute. We can't join it with a prostitute. We can no longer steal. So he paid for us, declared us free, but he did not tell us, okay, now your records have been wiped off. You cannot go. No, he did not say you cannot go. He said, now come, let me empower you and also admit you into my holy kingdom. It's like seeing a homeless child. You adopt the child, you cleanse the child, adopt the child. But there are rules in your home. Imagine that child messing up your children, abusing them. Let me tell you what happened. A few years ago, I saw about eight children. There are nine of them. I had to, they were sleeping outside. They were sleeping in the market. Some of them have parents, some of them are orphans. So I, I took them from the street. Even had to reach out to the police station, the also visited the Ministry of Women Affairs and Child Development. I had to restore most of them to their parents. One of them, he, his dad is late. I had to take him to their family compound. And I was giving him money to feed and also using his uncle kind of a far relative, but they live in the same compound, family relative, to also monitor him. I would call, talk with him. Every month I would send him money for feeding. 
But there are these three siblings. One was then, I think she was 15 or 16 years. One of them refused to come out of the streets. I had to put them in school, sew uniform for them. One of them, the day I was told the day he wore the uniform, he ran away with the uniform, school uniform. He refused to go to school. Then the remaining two, a boy and a girl, a boy eight years old, who was already doing drugs at eight years, he was already taking drugs, cheap drugs. He would beg for money and then he would take drugs, the money. Do you know a, a good Samaritan agreed to house them? Do you know the pain we went through? <laughs> this eight-year-old boy would wake up in the night, go to the pot of soup, and eat all the meat. I set up a restaurant for this woman, a young widow. They made sure that the restaurant shut down. They brought a lot of pains to me and this woman who was housing them. I tried the best I can to make them comfortable, put them in school, send allowance on a monthly basis, buy clothes for them, but they were not ready to stay in the house. They would leave the house, maybe in the morning, and come back in the night. This is exactly what a lot of people are doing in the kingdom of God. When you are in the world, and God says, come into my kingdom, I will provide for you. I will give you everything you need. Forget about your debts. I've paid for them. Some of you say, well, I can't do without abusing children. Oh, king, I love your wife. I need to have kind of knowledge of your wife. I can't do without stealing. When the king says, don't sit on my throne, don't drink Anything with my golden cup. Don't desecrate my throne. And then you say, well, I love your throne. If I must live in this house, please permit me to sit on your throne. I want to drink with your golden cup. This is what a lot of people are doing. Christianity is not a religion. This is a kingdom of of God. In the days of the king, God will set up a kingdom, an everlasting kingdom, in the days of the kings. That is a prophecy in Isaiah. This is a kingdom. Jesus Christ said, when he was teaching them how to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. The kingdom will come to this world and the will of God will be done. By who? By you and I. It is a holy kingdom. The will of God is that we live in sanctification. He has called us unto holiness, not unto uncleanness. You are not permitted to do everything you like. <laughs> There are rules in this kingdom. The body doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Do you also know that when Jesus Christ was here, he said, there are many of you who will not see death until you see the kingdom of God come down with power. On the day of Pentecost, we saw the kingdom. That was the day the church was given birth. That is the best day of the church. On the day of Pentecost.
if you are a member of this kingdom if you bear the name of the lord if you call yourself christ like also remember that we are called unto holiness not unto unrighteousness know this lastly let us read revelation 22 verses 11 and 12 he that is unjust let him be unjust thee but he that is filthy let him be filthy thee and he that is righteous let him be righteous thee and he that is holy let him be holy thee and behold i come quickly my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be are you holy are you righteous are you pursuing the righteousness of god or you were pursuing the righteousness according to human hypocrisy you cannot use your own power to make yourself holy can you tell the lord please send your angel with a life code from your altar and use that life code to touch my mouth touch my lips let your fire consume every darkness in my heart send your world of fire into my heart consume everything every residue of evil from my heart father lord i pray for this your children that your power will come upon them may the spirit of god rest upon you the power to live a holy life receive it in the name of jesus may shame and disgrace not be your portion but so ever thing that will make you to look back or so ever thing that is capable of making you to lose your salvation may the power of the lord destroy it every area of your life there is darkness may the light of god shine upon it may that life cold from the altar of god destroy that darkness in the name of jesus lord walking with you is not easy our walk with you is not perfect the lord help us to be perfect help us to walk with you in perfection you said just as your heavenly father is perfect be ye perfect lord help us to be perfect not according to human standard not according to the standard of this world not according to the standard of our understanding but according to the standard of heaven lord we that preach righteousness help us so that we also will not be left behind it is not about preaching it's about doing the word it's about walking in the light for no one is made righteous no one is declared acquitted by preaching rather by doing the word for those who teach the word and don't do it have greater condemnation therefore lord help me and help us many you have called to awaken the church i pray for as many who are wallowing in sin the lord you will lift them up from the mire of sin Savior, lift your people up from sin. In the name of Jesus, wash your people. Forgive their sins and give them your garment of righteousness that is with us spot and wrinkle and powers energize us to follow you. Lord, I pray this moment for those who have been supporting our ministry and our charity organization. Lord, empower them support your children take away their challenges visit your people in the name of the lord jesus christ may the hand of the lord see you through may the hand of the lord
pull you through every passage, every process, every temptation in the name of Jesus. Every trial you are facing right now, may the Lord God Almighty help you. May he be well with you. Lord, grow this ministry and help your people who are following this ministry, who are part of this ministry. Help them to produce the fruits of righteousness that people may see their good works and give praise to you, our Father in heaven. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. Please share this video with other people and also don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so. Kindly support our ministry. Our details are in the description box and also on the screen. Please support us. Not many people support us. May the Lord bless you as you do so. In Jesus' name. Amen. See you next time. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.